y'all. I am super excited and I am looking forward. I'm looking forward to the day that Jesus says, okay, it's time to shake things up. It's time to interrupt some plans and it's time to call my children home. It's time for the day of the rapture. Like I, I'm looking forward to it. I am looking for the day when Jesus is like, hey, today's the day to interrupt some plans. I know you got some good plans going. Like you may be a, you may be looking forward to having a good beach day or a roller coaster day. You may be looking forward to a zoo day. You may be looking forward to swimming with dolphins. Um arcade day, just uh, chilling with your family day. I don't know, maybe you're going to the lake, maybe you're having a barbecue. The list goes on and on about what you have personally planned for the day. And I love that Jesus says, no man knows the daytime or hour. So, I I make plans for the day and I'm, I'm like, okay, Jesus, today's a good day for the rapture. Today's a good day for you to interrupt my plans and give me the best day of my life. Today is the day that I am looking for you. If not to, if you decide not to interrupt my plans today with the rapture of the church, well, guess what? I'm going to be looking for you tomorrow and the next day and the next day until you take me home in the rapture. I feel like we are in that moment where we need to be looking for Jesus to interrupt our plans. Ugh. What a glorious day that's going to be. Like, I am super excited for the best day of my life when I get to be at me in heaven and see my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, I am, I'm looking forward to it. because Jesus is the best thing in my life. Yeah, I have a lot of good things in my life. But the best and most precious thing in my life is Jesus. The best and most glorious and most sought out treasure in my life is Jesus. His will and his plan for my life. And knowing that one day I'm going to be in heaven and I'm going to see my Lord and Savior face to face. Are you looking forward to that day too? Like Jesus is honestly my best friend. I tell him everything. I mean everything. I ask him from the littlest, silliest, goofy things that people would be like, really why did you ask for that because Jesus is in everything so why not ask him about every little thing I mean if you truly think about it when you're in the shower Jesus is right there when you have when you have to go to the bathroom Jesus is right there when you're sleeping Jesus is right there. When you are eating breakfast, when you are... He's there 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you're doing anything, He's there. And He knows exactly what you're doing. So, yeah. He wants you to tell Him every little detail of your life. Jesus wants you to have that relationship with Him. And how do you do that? You start telling him everything. Talk to him like for girls. Bro, uh, talk to talk to Jesus like like he's your best gossip friend in the whole world. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm look at it that way. Like be like Jesus. I need to tell you something because like I'm about to lose it and just unload on him. Tell him everything and he will answer
closer to you. He will be there. He is. He, he truly is your best friend. I mean, he, there's nothing you can tell him that will surprise him. There's nothing that you can do or say that's going to shock him. Building a relationship with Jesus is so easy. I, I, my best friend was born in a manger, and I cannot wait to see him face to face. I just want to give him a big old hug and tell him, thank you. I don't deserve what you've done for me. I truly do not deserve. I don't deserve what he's done for me. I don't deserve it. But I'm so grateful. So grateful to have him in my life. I am so grateful that Jesus Jesus fought for me. I mean, literally, Jesus is that top who's going to look at you and be like, okay, so maybe you smell a little bit. Okay, so maybe you say kooky, quirky things. Maybe you have too much energy. Maybe you like to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. Maybe you like to laugh too much. Maybe you're that awkward person. But you know what? No matter what, no matter, maybe you're that weird person that likes to eat dirt. I don't know. But you know what? If somebody were to ask Jesus, and I believe this wholeheartedly, is this thing yours? This thing that is weird and does all these kooky, quirky things? Jesus is going to smile. I truly believe that he would sit there and smile and go, Yeah, they're mine. I love them. I died for them. I gave up my kingdom. I came, to, I came from heaven to earth. I died on the cross at Calvary. Yeah, they're mine. They're mine. I bought and paid for them with my precious blood. Of course they're mine. And I love all their quirky qualities. That is the love of Jesus. Jesus loves you. No matter what. No matter what your quirky quality is. No matter if the world finds it to be a weird quirk, Jesus is like, I made you that way. And I will use that for my kingdom, my honor, my praise, my glory, and I will work it all out for your good. Because I love you. And you're mine. And I... Jesus cannot wait to call you home. But he's going to call you home in his perfect timing. It is so amazing how Jesus loves you. Jesus is looking forward to having you in heaven. Jesus wants you in his kingdom. Jesus is calling out to you. Jesus is saying, come to me. I don't care. I don't care what the world says about you. Jesus says, I love you. Jesus says, I want you. Jesus says, you're mine, and I want all of you, the 
good, the bad, the happy, the sad. I want all of it. I am so grateful because honestly, sometimes I'm like a quirky, messy person. Like, I don't know. I'm just a weird oddball. My husband even tells me, you know, you're an oddball, right? And I'm like, and your point is... <laughs> God loves you. Please, if you are thinking, oh, Jesus doesn't love me because I eat dirt... Or Jesus doesn't love me because I snort when I laugh. Or I have this really embarrassing thing that I can't even mention. God loves you. God loves that quirkiness about you. He loves that unmentionable weird thing about you. God wants to mold you and make you. God wants to use you for his kingdom. God wants to work everything out for your good. So please, please stop making excuses on why you can't give your life to the Lord. Why you can't live for Jesus. Stop making excuses that he won't love you enough. Stop making excuses that he's not going to claim you. Stop making excuses on why you can't give your life to Jesus. Because guess what? He is waiting on you. He wants to save you from the hour of wrath that will come upon the whole world. He wants to save you from the seven years of tribulation. He wants to save you. He wants you in his kingdom. He wants to call you beloved child he wants you so I don't know why everybody keeps making excuses I don't know why people keep running from the truth I don't know why they just can't embrace the person that God has created I don't know why Everybody has to keep denying Jesus because he loves you. He knew you and formed you in your before you were even thought of being put in your mother's womb. He loves you beyond all measure. You are his pride and joy. How can you not see the love of Jesus? Jesus is calling you. Jesus is waiting on you to say, okay, Lord, I give up. I'm tired of running. I give my life to you. Please forgive me of my sins. I want to build a relationship with you. I want you the center of my life. I believe that you died for me. And you paid for all of my sins, past, present, and future. He's waiting on you to stop running. He's waiting on you to give it all to him.
when it was easy. Because the seven years of tribulation are not going to be easy. They are going to be tough. They are going to be horrible. They are going to be the worst time in history. Bye, y'all.